good morning good morning hi family we are full of joy to be joining with you this morning right sis <laughs> we are yes we are <laughs> oh lord help me okay <laughs> Yeah. you guys you know it's uh it's interesting this this awakening thing because there'll be days where you hit a stride and your you your sail is filled with the the spirit of holy holy spirit truth and love and you feel like a battery that's been charged and you have it to give and then there's other times where you feel completely flat uninspired and um but that's a that's a beautiful opportunity because who is it that feels flat and uninspired? I mean, the Christ is always, always full, overfilled, and gives liberally all the time because that is its function. And so it's just a switch in our core identification of who am I? And so when we reach this plateau of I have nothing to give or I don't feel inspired, we can take that next step through what would seem like some sort of a line drawn by the ego like you can't do it and it's i can't but the holy self can mm. so we we push through that lie that says that we're uninspired or we don't have anything to give and that's um that's what sis and i are doing today where you be gentle with yourself where you're at but also to step forward on behalf of love and your true identity and say while the mythical me certainly can't the holy self can that's it. So we'll see if the Holy Self can take us through this lesson. <laughs> Put your yeah. pocket gloves on. <laughs> Who am I fighting? Myself. Oh, right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So today's lesson is 284. And it's entitled, I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt. Wow. Isn't that the perfect lesson for us? Isn't it? <laughs> you got a lot. Yeah. So what really pings is that word elect. You know, for myself, it's just, it is an election. Our thoughts that we think are based on the teacher that we choose. And the teacher that we've chosen is based upon what we identify as. So if I'm mythical me, I've got an ego in charge, ego thought system, and it's only going to pull thoughts that reflect fear and guilt and torment and hatred and etc. cetera. Or, pain, all right. yeah. physical pain, disease. Absolutely. Yeah, death. all <laughs> death and all of its lesser forms, right? Yeah. Or we can elect uh, to recognize ourselves as the son of God and allow Holy Spirit, our right mind, to lead and enlighten and show the show us the way, and that will call in thoughts of truth and peace and the fact that we can rest in God and that God lives us. There's not there's not a doer, there's an allower going on. Yeah. Okay. I love that the allower. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Rather than the doer, because mm -hmm. the yeah. doing comes from the allowing, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we get prompted and then it's effortless. That's that being in that flow. Okay. So what is Jesus going to say here? <laughs> loss is not loss when properly perceived. Pain is impossible. There is no grief with any cause at all. And suffering of any kind is nothing but a dream. Such is the truth. At first to be said, and then repeated many times, and next to be accepted as partly true with, with many reservations, then to be considered seriously more and more and finally accepted as the truth. I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt, and I would pass beyond the words today, go past all reservations, and arrive at full acceptance of the truth in them. 
Father, what you have given cannot hurt, so grief and pain must be impossible. Let me not fail in trust in you today, accepting only the joyous as your gifts, accepting only the joyous as the truth. Beautiful. I think we get to this place in the journey in recognizing how this this seeming world of separation works and that it's not happening to us but that it's coming from us again how you would want to view yourself or experience yourself is the thoughts that you will think and those thoughts that you think and believe are going to be your experience in this realm and so you can forgive the outside world because that's happening in your mind and recognize I'm always at choice. I'm going to will with God or in defiance of God, I'm going to substitute my own, the ego's thoughts in place. If I do that, I'm going to suffer. But when I allow only God's will to be, which really is our will, the Holy Spirit, our right mind wills with God, it's, it's a choice. We're electing that which we value. And, and that has to be just the question. What kind of day do I want? What is it that I want to experience? Now that we're seeing and having full accountability for everything that seems to happen to us, now you throw the lever. If I stay on this track as mythical me, and serving the ego and idolizing the body and a separate a world with separation symbols, I will always attract pain and disease and ultimately death. Not much of a choice, right? But we can throw that switch over and begin an earnest practice. This is that consistently, that's like going through the um, reservations. How lovely that Jesus sort of sets forth this road map. You know, we learn the truth and we might say it. That's the workbook lessons. I'm saying it. But do I know it? No, but it's being introduced to my thought. And then we repeat it, right? We've got these, these um, buzzers on our phones and we've got our, our buddies that we meet with. And then we begin to accept them as partly true. But then that ego's right there filled with doubt. Well, yeah, that's true. But this problem I've got seems very, very real. I need to do something about this also. So we have these reservations, right? then to be considered seriously more and more. We start logicking this out. If this is true, then it really is at, it's at my disposal. It's my election. This isn't happening to me. Finally, we accept that the truth is true and nothing else is true. Hmm. Hmm. And that might take years. It could, <laughs> but I think it that it would- years. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, let me, I think that I like to look at that, to say that, and, and I see that it correlates with the six stages of the development of trust in the yeah. manual of teachers. Uh -huh. And as you know, that does take years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right, to go through those six stages. And I would say that this does correlate with those six stages, yeah. that what he's saying there, you know, that, it, yeah, that there are four, four steps here. Mm -hmm. right, until we get to finally accept that what he's saying is truth. Okay, because uh, up until then, we do believe that the problem, wherever we seem to see it, mm -hmm. is just as real, if not more real than God. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. the issue. Mm -hmm. And therefore more real than our, our holy self. Right. And it's a hypnotism. It's a deep state of hypnotism until we, until we come in and we take a stand, like he was saying before, says that it's, I'm just going with what I'm feeling right now. I any, where I'm at, mm -hmm. this may not be helpful for anybody who's just beginning, but for where I'm at, I have to take a stand. And that stand is not with anything external. The stand is which identity yeah. 
is perceiving this particular issue or problem. Right. It's got to be the one that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's in opposition to God and therefore in opposition to me as the Christ. Yes. So at that point, then I have to say, no, that is not me. Mm -hmm. The one that's fearful of an outcome, the one that's trying to manipulate a certain agenda, mm -hmm. that's all of that. It's got to come from the ego. So that is where I could just cut the guilt and go, that's not me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not swallowing the guilt that comes with all of that as well. Yeah. To make that fundamental switch from being mythical me, the ego, to being and standing as the holy self vertically. That's it. Right. That's I'm it. just yeah. needing to give myself a really good bitch slap right now. <laughs> you be picking on my sis oh god that's funny um yeah so let's, can we put this in more practical terms for our, our listeners right now so no matter where you are in this journey there's something there's something today on your plate something that's bothering you something that's calling for your attention and when we look at it and we are afraid of it, or it's causing us fear, notice, notice, let's just back up and look at the, the process that's going, okay? So the one that you think you are is looking through the sensory perception, like physical sense, upon something, or perceiving a situation, or a brother. And then the mind goes into, I know, and it makes a judgment about it, and it's, obviously it's not good because it's a problem, it's creating fear. And then it wants to go into how to manipulate or fix or do anything. And all the while we get stuck in that, that loop, right? This overplay. Once you get that problem fixed, another one comes so you can restart the process again. Yeah. Cause can we just get wise and recognize that no matter what the appearance is and the looping process that the mind goes through, it's all to serve the one that you think you are so it has something to look at something to do something to get distracted in what the ego is sitting in the back room in its director's chair you know uh giddy is that your mind is shut off from the light your mind is absorbed and, and shut down what your mind is created to be open as a portal or a transparency for the movement of god god's creation is closed it's in a state of contraction because it thinks it's a person who's having a problem and you're off with the races trying to do something about it. But um, the ego is protected. You'll never know your holy self. You will never awaken while your mind is closed. Hmm. So you can just take the, the broom and the dustpan and recognize what that problem's there for. It seems to be external and it's going to draw you out and you'll spend lifetimes doing this. And we want to just cut to this. You can elect as soon as the surge comes to you that says, feed me, feed this story. Look at the problem. Let's go. Let's have another round today of that same old problem, right? In that moment, this is a call of the ego thought system for guilt and death. Can we just stop in that moment? There is no external problem. But while there seems to be, that is this mind suck that says, pay attention to this illusion, be separate from your God, and get your dose of daily guilt. Don't awaken, okay? So now, today, today we take the stand with our sis, Nook, just like that. We're gonna take a stand and recognize, I've never become a person I'm not Corrine. I'm not, I don't have physical sense. I have spiritual sense. I'm in the mind of God, but this body and its senses is not what I am. Mm. And I'm not going to spend my day looking at unreal illusions and being off with the, I wanted to say fairies, but I like fairies. So demons. <laughs> okay. <the> demons. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go party with the demons. I'm just, I'm going to stop right now and say, here's my choice point. I'm at elect. I'm going to elect what i'm going to choose to stop 
and allow my right mind to have audience. I'm going to let that mind it be in me that was in Christ Jesus. I'm going to let that inform me. I'm going to let that direct me and move me, tell me how to go, what to say, so that I can rest in God and let my life be just a flow of, of beauty, of light, of truth, of health, of abundance, to be part of the answer, to be the light of the world, to be at peace. To let my mind function in its natural, effortless state. So I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt. And I will. I forgive that first thought and everything that comes with it. I turn my back on it and I go to the one who knows and says, take it from here. That's accepting the atonement. Beautiful. Mm Mm-hmm. Beautiful, sis. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I can elect to change the thoughts that hurt, right? Yeah. All thoughts that hurt. Yeah. Not just some of them, all of them. That's right. How about that? You elect personhood apart from God and everything's going to suck. Even the stuff that's good is going to eventually hurt you. Because it's not from God. It's change, changeable. It's going to change. It, it's seek and don't find. Right. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Just quickly repurpose everything you think you're going for with the Holy Spirit and let him use it for part of God's plan for salvation. All right. That's lesson 284. So we can do it. We must do it if we want to awaken and we want to know our holy self, awaken from the dream. So let's do it. Let's get on about it today. Thank you, sis. Hey, we love you. We're doing this with you and we thank you. Thanks, family. Bye, everybody.